bachelor's, bachelor's in software, in software engineering. engineering. So she is Lupina. The international student fees is a lot. Okay. And I think the, the RMIT fees is a bit lesser. The fees actually, I think it changes every year. There are multiple fields. There are multiple course. fields and a lot of jobs. Okay. They're pretty chill. Pretty like, chill? Yeah. Hi guys, hi everyone. Welcome back to another vlog. This is Cap Vlog with Lufina hi. from our MIT. And today we are going to talk about a course which was highly demanded by you guys to make a video on, which is software engineering. Bachelor's, Bachelor's in, software, in software, engineering. software engineering. So she is Lufina. Do you mind introducing yourself once? Hi everyone. I'm Lufina Zohar, and I'm doing my third semester here in our MIT in Bachelor's in Software Engineering. And I'm originally from Tamil Nadu. So we're going to talk about this course, we're going we're gonna to speak what the things are you should keep in mind as I make videos on other courses as well. Probably this video is going to help some of you and huge credit goes to you because you're going to help so many people sure. I guess. And just to let you know, if you have any questions related to the course, just comment it in this video. Um, she's going to reply whenever you get time, just reply to those people. So yeah. Okay. So coming back to the main topic software engineering in RMIT. Let's start with the basic stuff. How's your personal experience in this course? So I in my grade 12 I did biomath so I didn't have prior knowledge about coding and when I came in first I didn't it was like an empty blank when I entered the first class and then they were teaching me Java and eventually I had studied a bit um, on my own at home after the classes like the, the practicals would last for three hours and the lectures would mostly for about two hours. And um, and that's how I I got the interest and then I started go, going to the class. And you like it? Yes, I do. Okay. I and love it. <laughs> so choosing Australia, I mean, how did you choose Australia and how did you choose RMIT? Okay, that, that's a pretty hard question. Okay. Because my dad was already living here. Yep. And... Um, my dad's family friend, he recommended that Melbourne is a really good place okay. to study. Yeah. And even the job opportunities are a lot here. Yep. And Just th these are the basic reasons. Yeah, these are the basic reasons why I choose Melbourne. And for choosing RMIT, I think it's one of the best university. I think it's a top third uni. In, in tech? Yeah, in tech. The first is, no, I think in tech, it's the second uni. The first is Monash and the second is RMIT. Like I even got a job, I mean, I even got the offer, offer from Swinburne, but I choose RMIT because it's the best. I feel. So did you... And the structure was really nice. It was really good. See. Like I don't have to study much math. Okay. So it was only just two subjects of math. Uh -huh. And those are not much hard, I guess. Okay. I managed to get a distinction in maths last year. That's yeah, good. So that would, wouldn't be a problem. So, talking about the um, comparison of universities while you were doing, you were checking Monash is at top, mm -hmm. RMIT at second. So, was there any comparison reason that you chose RMIT or anything that you think that RMIT will be providing only for me? I mean, Monash is not good in that or do you have any no, other reasons like, for I, Like, there was this thing called the fees. Okay. Monash, the international student fees is a lot. Okay. And I think the, the RMIT fees is a bit lesser. Like a few Monash. thousands are lesser than Monash. Than Monash okay. Yeah. And it's almost the same study pattern and they're going to yeah. follow, right? So did you just have a proper browse on website? Yeah, I did have course? a proper browse on the course structure. Okay. And this was just pure software engineering and yep. nothing more. Hmm. So okay. we, you don't have to like, in, if I study this course in India. Yep. I will have to study maths, chemistry, physics for no reason in my year one. But over here, it's just pure. Yeah. Okay. Fair enough, All right? right. So as you're talking about fees, let's talk the next point about, mm -hmm. um, which is the affordability. I mean, what's the affordability? What's the fee structure of this course? If someone's going to do software engineering in RMIT. Or in Australia, it's just basic. The, the fees actually, I think it changes every year. Yep. Like by 10 percentage or something. Yes, go there. Mm. Yep. And you should be receiving scholarships for th about 20% yep. if you're an international student. And I took loan. 
okay. to, to study here. Yep. And yeah. Was getting the loan difficult or you just showed the basic? Yeah, I just showed the basic and then I got the loan to come here. So it was not hard to get the loan and stuff. Yeah, it was. And um, the fee structure, I mean, do you have any value? What's the semester fee per semester fee? Uh, it it have? actually depends on the on the number of credits. The, the fees actually differs from the credit. Okay. If it's a 12 credit, then the fees will be about 4K. Yep. If it's a 24 credit, then it, the fees would be 8K. That's how the fees go. So 8, 8K per semester or per course? Per course. So And how many courses do we have in this one semester? An average value. On average, um, for year one, it is three sub three uh, subjects per per semester. Okay. For this year, I'm having four. Yeah. Yeah. And um, just to clarify, so in India, we call course course is like a program, the whole program, like software engineering, and here we call subjects as courses. So this is the difference. If you don't know what I'm trying to say, so yeah, thank you for the knowledge, by the way, for the affordability. It's just the basic. Um, if you are doing four or at least three courses per semester, you're going to pay almost three by four, twelve thousand dollars, around twelve thousand dollars per semester for 12 the course. Or 20, 12, 12 to 16K per semester. Depends on the course and depends, yeah, it depends on, the on the number of subjects that you've chosen. Okay. How the course structure are, is um, regarding this course? Are. Is it difficult? Is it easy? It Everything depends on your interest. Okay. I mean, if you study that subject with a lot of interest and if you put your imagination through. Yeah. For example, I had used a lot of imagination and creativity for my semester one uh -huh. when I was creating a website, yep. which was like usually you will they will do that in the last year in yep. India. But I had to do that for my first and so I was like so surprised. Yep. But at the same time, I had more knowledge about how to do that and now i'm building more um confidently yep and and i'm using advanced tools to build my knowledge in software engineering is is it more only about coding or you can use different aspects like you just mentioned the word for yeah it's not only about coding it's about there's maths involved yep. there's a lot of designing for like ui and ux yep and and of course coding comes and it's... when you combine all of this, that makes the best website oh, or okay. the app that you're whatever. Why I'm fond of hearing this because I am myself a UI UX designer. But yeah. in your field, it's more about developing, right? Mm -hmm. So you collaboratively work with designers mm -hmm. and they design and then you develop those mm -hmm. websites and apps or whatever yes. they have asked. Okay. Okay. That seems good. One more question. How the future pathways are after doing this course? The future pathways are like in my course um, in my structure in my year four i can choose a lot of options like cloud computing yep. so whatever minor that you're choosing and your maybe your pathway might be dependent on that yep it, it's totally on your interest like uh -huh. if i if i am interested in cloud then i'll choose a job that's related to cloud you, you're like open to all kind of jobs yep. like cloud cyber security data science biomedical robotic software engineering so there are multiple fields there are multiple course. fields and a lot of jobs and it's not like people who do it it's not it it it's, not it's just a higher yeah. higher version of it right so it's like diving deep into mm -hmm. how the yes. things work okay and there are multiple pathways which you mentioned yeah. there can be other as well it's just person has to visit website and yeah there if they go to the rmit website yeah. on the course structures on the oh. year for year four yeah they will be able to find the, what are the uh, minors that they can take okay. and there's a lot of options compared to all the other unis that I have seen. Okay. So that was also one of the main reasons why I chose RMIT. One more thing, um, how the lecturers and professors are? I mean, how the, how They're they, pretty chill. Pretty like, chill? Yeah. Okay. I mean, they help you in your, I mean, not, I mean, not help you, they guide you like, and then they teach you with the assignments mm -hmm. that you, if you want to help. Yep. And you can book appointments if you have to and yep. meet them and if you have any issues you can just go up to them and then tell them and there's a lot of instructors who will guide you through your practical sessions okay and the last question sorry to keep it long but this is the last question we are ending the video soon which is related to pr i mean whose students are coming um, they want to know how this course ends up in getting pr in australia 
So if you have any knowledge related to this, let's share. Like so far, from what I have heard from my family friends is that if you secure a good job yep. with a good salary, yep. and then um, I'm pretty sure that company will help you to get a PR. That's how what my family friend got it recently. And they got it. Yeah. Like really. sponsoring visa. This is we call in sponsor. Yeah, I mean, okay. yeah. And there are other ways as well, right? If you can just find the job directly mm-hmm. through skilled occupation list, you know the skilled occupation mm-hmm. list. If you have the role of the job which you're doing in that list, then you can apply for independent visas. Uh, it's okay, okay. but okay. I'll, let me tell you, this is how we things work. Okay, cool. So it's just you need to first check in the skilled occupation list if there's anything related to this course, related to the future pathways that's upcoming. Yeah. So this was all the course about. If you have any questions, I would say just comment down. And if you get some time, just please sure, reply to them. And thank you. Thank you. Um, you can follow on Instagram. Type any question in the comment section. Like, share, and subscribe to this channel if you need more videos related to RMIT. Thank you so much for answering yeah. the questions. Sure. Um, we'll see you soon in some other some other semester and some other video too. Yeah. So this is Caplog. Lufina. Signing off. Bye. Bye.